Hi everyone. In our previous video, we have explored about how does the stack works in Java. Today, we are going to explore about heap. How does heap works in Java? Before getting to the topic, we must know about what is heap. Heap is the memory space used to store objects instantiated by the applications running on the JVM. All those objects can be accessed by any thread running on the JVM. This is all about the brief intro about the heap. Let's explore the heap by using some try run. So I have a simple class which contains two functions main and modify list. I have stack and heap memory space. So I'm going to uh, explore line by line how it is getting stored inside the stack as well as the heap. Let's start our execution from the main function. As we have seen already about the main function, so it stores the empty ARGS variable. It doesn't store any value inside the ARGS. So I just keep that uh, line of execution. I just want to start the execution from the second line. From the second line, we came to know that realist object is created. Whenever we use the new operator in our program, new object will be created inside the heap. When we execute the first line, whenever we use a new operator, new object will be created inside the heap. So we are creating a new array list object in the first line of execution. So the list object is created and the reference of the list variable will be created inside the stack. So it will pointing to the list object. Let's see the second line of execution. When the second line of execution starts, we are adding a string literal to the array list. This is the string literal which is equivalent to the new string of char. As we said earlier, whenever we use new operator, new object will be created inside the heap. So here, the string object has been created at the index of 0 in the list. 0th text is pointing to the string. The important thing to be noted here is we don't have any reference variable to this string. So we cannot directly access this string but we can access this string from the list variable. So when we go to the next line of execution again we are adding the new string David. New object will be created inside the heap which will be added to the first index of the list. Again we are executing the third line. So new object will be created which will be pointing at the second index of the string. When we execute the next line of program which is the function call of modify list. So the control will be goes to the modify list function. Here what we are doing is we are creating a new variable receive list. So this variable will be created inside the stack which is pointing to the same list. Again very important thing to be noted here is we are just creating the new variable just receives the copy of the list reference not a list object. We are not creating any new object. We are not creating any new list. We just have the same object. We are just passing the copy of the reference. We are not passing the list. We are just passing the copy of the reference. As we said earlier, whenever we enter into the new function, the so old variables pushed into the stacks goes to the out of scope. Let's execute the first line of the modify list function. When we execute the first line, temp variable created inside the stack which is pointing to the string object. Let's understand what is happening here. So we, we are retrieving the 0th index and assigning the value to the temp variable which are pointing to the 0th index of the list. The string object which is pointing by both the 0th index of the list as well as the temp variable. We are gonna execute the next line of the program. Here we are adding the new variable bob to the receive list. Whenever we use a new operator, new opening object will be created here and which will be pointing to the third index of the list. And when we execute the next line, here system.out.println will print all the contents of the list. When we execute the next line, we reach the end of the curly brace. As we said earlier in the stack video, when we reach the end of the function, the scoped variable inside the function will be 
popped out from the stock again control will be goes to the main function and we are going to execute the last line of the function which is system.out.println when we enter into the main function the list variable comes to the scope so when the variable is comes to the scope we can access the list by using the list variable when we enter into the main function this list variable will be comes to the scope we can access this list object by using this list variable so system.out.println will print entire content of the list this is all about the brief introduction of the heap functionality we doesn't explore about the entire functionality of the heap because heap contains lot more functionalities lot more components inside the heap there are lot of components are available inside the heap such as older generation younger generation garbage collector and string pool lot of uh, components are available inside the heap in upcoming videos we will explore all those components one by one i hope you have understand how the objects are created how it is referenced by the stack variable and all those things let's meet in another video with some interesting topics so bye for now thanks for watching